Speaking of warming up, the transfer portal's hot. Look at that segue. <laughs> just been doing it for years. Um, and there are some players in the transfer portal with some big time accolades, big time names from big time programs that LSU should certainly have a keen eye on. I think there have been some people that may roll their eyes when LSU grabs a cornerback from Louisiana Lafayette or a lineman from East Tennessee State or a linebacker who is a three-star from Virginia. I understand if that doesn't move your needle. doesn't mean they're going to be all-conference players or total busts. I, I don't know. I don't know. I know that having players is better than having no players, <laughs> and LSU is bringing some in. But Jack Bernard Converse has entered his name into the transfer portal. Don't know who that is? Probably shouldn't know who that is. I certainly didn't until today. Um, but he is... Um, a cornerback who is from Oklahoma State, who is a first-team All-Big 12 performer. He has been a three-year starter for Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's defense this year was really, really good. Their coordinator got a job at Ohio State. Uh, they were the best defense in the Big 12 right there with Baylor. And and Jarek Bernard Converse was a big piece of that. Now, why would you say would he want to come to LSU? Well, let <laughs> me just tell you. Uh, Jarek is from Shreveport. He went to Evangel. He was high school teammates with Micah Baskerville. LSU's secondary room, we know, is grossly depleted. This is a guy that would be a huge get. This is a Big 12 starter, first-team All-League player who is ready to play, and he's from the state of Louisiana. Hopefully, LSU is locked and loaded on Jarek Jarek Bernard Converse. (laughs) Yeah, I think they definitely are, and I think – uh, Coach Kelly's found a little niche here as far as it's just the recruiting base goes, as far as hiring coaches, uh, finding people with Louisiana ties and, and just going after those people to come back home. And I think he's done that at, a, at an extremely high level. And now I think this falls right into that category of guy who's played at the college level, has success, and it's from the great state of Louisiana. So I think uh, for, for the coaching staff at LSU, uh, I'm sure they're going to be targeting him, just getting defensive backs in that room. Uh, just really having two guys from the 2021 season on the roster as of now, it's not a great look. So you got to start filling that in. And I think for, for a guy that's uh, all Big 12 guy, I think that's somewhere you should definitely start. We got to get Hester on the line. That's an evangel guy. Just get <laughs> get make it happen. This is supposed to be your leck of the woods. Um, he's six one. Uh, he is over 200 pounds. Um, he had st- so he had st- entering this season. He had started 33 games. My assumption is that he started all of the games this year. He's somewhere in the neighborhood of 40-plus games started uh, as a D1 player. That is an absolute, I can't say must get because that's not realistic. <laughs> it's not mu- You don't like fold the, the, the program if you don't get him. This would be enormous if LSU could go get them because we talked. Th- the secondary room is is totally depleted. As of three weeks ago, they had two guys left. They had basically Radarius Jones and Demarius McGee. And that was about it. Now, you've gone to Arkansas and gotten Fuchsia and gotten gotten West, and you've gone to ULL and gotten Garner, and Jay Wars decided to come back, which is good. Um, you know, Major Burns. And then if you could look and add one or more, one or two more with the two that you've signed, your numbers start to look better. It still doesn't look as good as it needs to look, but I'm, I'm not being – this is not hyperbole here. Like, LSU – is close to not like fielding a competent football team in terms of numbers. Like you can't go out there with five corners. Like that's you, you got to have eight. Like you you have to go get corners. So um, this would be absolutely huge to get. So uh, Jarek is his name. Jarek Bernard Converse from Shreveport. We'll see if LSU can make a push there. The other name that's gone to the transfer portal as of today, Jermaine Burton. Former four-star recruit from out in California, was committed to LSU once upon a time, decided to decommit, ended up at Georgia, was their leading receiver this past year in a receiver room that was ravaged with injuries. Just so happens Georgia's wide receiver coach now coaches at LSU. Jermaine Burton, the guy that LSU can go to to bring in. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for Jermaine, I don't know if LSU be the place or he'd want to go just with some of the receivers you have in the room, but I'm sure LSU's going to, you know, test those waters, especially with their receiver coach having that relationship with him. Um, I, I think it would be a great, but I just don't know the likelihood of him wanting to come to LSU with all the receivers they have, um, with Jare coming back, Malik, and, and some of the other guys in that room. Bash, um, Thomas, he, Hilton. He, yeah, it's, it's stacked, it's man. So Unless you're like the true alpha, alpha number one, you're probably going to be a first-round draft pick, and no matter what school you go to, you feel like you're going to be starting, and it doesn't matter. I don't know if LSU would be the place to be, but uh, he does have that uh, co- relationship with Coach Hankton, so we'll see. We shall see. Um, here's a question that was posed to me 
yesterday, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it. What is it? Would it be a foolish decision for a college coach? Let's talk LSU because that's what's important to us here. For LSU to only sign 17 high school kids a year and go get eight, nine, 10, 11, based on how many transfer out, you get 11 transfers and 17 high school guys a year. It, it, would that be better than signing 25 high school kids? Uh, I, I think for me, I, I like that more because you're, you're getting proven commodities. Yeah. You're getting guys you've seen go against actual guys who've been in strength and conditioning programs, guys who've played on the college level. The lights aren't too bright. You know what they can do. There's just so many unknowns with high school kids. We've seen it time and time again, guys who just don't pan out. Four or five star guys that, you know, they just don't, you don't know what they're going to be. And then when they get to the college level, it's just too much for them. So um, if I'm a head coach, and especially if you got guys leaving your program and you're in a situation like LSU where you can use all seven, then I'm, I'm maxing it out. I'm getting guys um, that I really feel that can play at the college level, that I can fit my scheme. I think that's probably a, a better route to go. And I think Lane Kiffin's doing that right now. They're not really caring about the high school kids. They're, they're going after the portal kids. This is a little bit extreme, but it's a, a gambling analogy that I think is is reasonably uh, on point. Some of the high school kids are lottery tickets. Like, that might be great, but might be absolutely worthless. At least the the transfer kids are more like a hand of blackjack. Like, blackjack, you got a 48% chance you can play by the book. It's like a round of roulette, 48% chance if you're on red or black. Like, if you've seen it, even if it's at, you know, Louisiana Lafayette or at, you know, Virginia, like you've seen them play at the college level against grown men and you've got a better opportunity to hit on that, I think. And so while I, I, I think there's a lot of value in having players for, for more years and you certainly want the high-end kids, it, it, it just it makes me wonder if maybe, I mean, certainly the five-star kids is not going to affect at all, but maybe... Those three-star kids who are a little bit, you know, lesser valued at this point, or undersized, or you're just not sure. If I'm a big-time program, like, why am I taking that kid when I can just go to the transfer portal and go get go get Jarek Bernard Converse, who's an All Big Twelve player? Like, I, yeah. I wonder if that doesn't change the landscape of the sport. I think it is. I think you see, like I just said with Kiffin, he's that's what he's doing right now. They're not really worried about getting the five stars and four stars out of high school. They're getting guys that are playing at the college level, and they're pointing to what they do on the offensive side, pointing to what they've done um, on the defensive side and say, hey, look, I know you're not happy with your situation. Like, this is what we've done with these certain players, and you play the same position. This is possibly what we can do with you. And I think with the high school kids, um, just so many of them are underdeveloped. Some of them, a lot of them have to gain weight. Some of them have to lose weight. There's so many things you have to develop and do with a lot of these 17 and 18 year old kids when you when you can get in the portal and go after 22, 20. We got an offensive line that's about to be 23 years old. So um, you don't have to worry about the strength and conditioning with all that stuff. You know, they're ready, plug and play guys. So um, I don't know if it switches over the total dynamic of uh, college football, but I definitely see some coaches implementing this at a high level. Um, rather than taking on the risk of not knowing what a high school kid can do. Look, it's uh, it's going to be difficult to have anybody show any remorse or shed any tears for $100 million head coaches and $900,000 a year assistant coaches, but the workload you're putting on college football staffs by forcing them to, one, go recruit all the high school seniors and juniors and sophomores and freshmen they want and making them recruit literally their entire roster every single year is really difficult to manage. I mean, look, <laughs> they get paid a lot. I get it. But that is almost an unrealistic expectation to have coaches do that. But that's that's where we are. And so you've got to make sure your whole team is happy or they're all going to be out the door. And now you're not only recruiting. You, know, you can't just have a camp and recruit. You've got to now recruit every player in the country because they're all in the transfer portal. So it's just it's It's a remarkable amount of humanity that you've got to monitor as a, a head coach and a recruiting coordinator and assistant coaches in college football. It's, it's almost hard to fathom. Yeah. I, I think, I think the NCAA is going to have to up that number from seven. I, I think especially with the dynamic of college football and the immediate eligibility and really there's no penalty to leaving. Um, you may see an exodus of 20, maybe 25 players yeah. for, with, with a coach leaving the program. I, I don't know what the number is for OU right now, but it seems like everyone's leaving OU. So um, they're going to have to up that number. Um, and then uh, with uh, recruiting everyone on your roster, that's a very real thing because guys aren't going to be happy, especially guys who feel like, you know, you recruited me out of high school. I was a four-star. Um, you, you said I would play and all these things. And 
um, back in my day, I had to be that old guy back in my day, but <laughs> back in my day, you, you just had to deal with it. Like you, you didn't play. Well, guess what? You're going to be right there on the right. Hey, you can go to JUCO or you can go to an FCS school. That's what you want to do, but there's no chance on earth. You're going to another division one program and you're definitely, even if that did happen, you're not playing right away. You're going to have to sit out a year. So just totally different times now, but you know, coaches are going to have to figure it out. We used to be able to sit here and on the radio and debate these head coaches blocking players from transferring places. They, they, I remember, I can't remember what school it was, but they he they blocked the transfer of this player, wide receiver, I don't even remember what position it was, to all the teams in that conference as well as the teams on the non-conference schedule the next two years. Like they were able to literally check boxes for what teams you can't transfer to. That was the case at one point. Now it's just... Open the gates and run, <laughs> boys, run. You can go wherever you're, the wind blows you. It's a, it's a whole new world. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.